Let us start uh, this lecture with a thought process. Cultivation is the method of realizing your infinite potential lying dormant in you by developing intimate relationship with mother nature. If you look at this thought I had also mentioned earlier that if you want to be a Rishi in sage you will have to do Krishi. Rishi banne ke liye Krishi karna jaruri hai. So, let us recall that what we had learned in the last lecture. We basically looked at sowing methods and then we looked at transpl transplantations, how to do that and what are the ways and why we will do and we also discuss about the mulching which is basically covering the soil and why we will do, how we will do, what are the types, all those things we learned. And today we will be looking at basically pesticides. Pesticides you will be knowing that you know paste which will be affecting the crop and basically insects, fungus and other things destroy the plants and therefore, pesticide is basically pest killer. And it was a, a problem which was being identified earlier also in our text or the literature that uh, people say that major calamities if you look at one of them of course, the insects, but other calamities what our ancestors had identified is the rain, cyclone, drought and uh, rats, you know rats were you know also these things. Today also we face problem and so also birds and parrots and foreign invasions. Of course, for the birds and parrots and other things we are having a way to give them something, so that they will be also there because the birds are important for, it is important for the uh, like taking this uh, stigma to other places. right? And uh, also the another thing is foreign invasion and uh, today if you look at we are facing the problem of cultural invasion okay? because our culture is being uh, getting spoiled uh, very rapid rate. And uh, according to the Agni Puranas that is uh, uh, it prescribes the few treatment to the promote the growth of flower fruits and uh, overcome the infertility. Right? And after uh, actually they use in this process they use a lot of uh, local materials and the organic materials which is available like bidanga which I had shown you, cow means desi ghee and they should use this mixture and they should be mixed with the cold water along with the kulatha, masha and mudga. These are the kinds of uh, grains what is being uh, you know being cultivated in our country and balle and sesamum. This is basically teal, and this has to be sprinkled for the uh, as a pesticides. And not only that, like uh, I remember that in our uh, place we used to have use the neem, right, uh, as a part of pesticides. Like, and there will be several other like dhatura and other plants were used as a pesticide for uh, the, so that you know it can prevent. And uh, this, those are local knowledge are uh, you know are being lost uh, now, uh, uh, is being lost already and we need to revive it and so that people will be not depending on, upon too much on the chemical pesticides, like the natural pesticides can be used. It recommends sprinkle with uh, sprinkle the plants with the cow ghee and cold water as a general remedy. Now, one has to test of course, cow ghee is very costly. Now, who will use that? We will have to find it out. <laughs> what is the better cheaper way of doing that? And uh, powder of the offal matter of sheep, goats and other animals as well. Offal matter means you know internal matters, uh, flesh which you uh, people cannot consume and uh, the barley powders and again teal, teal is very much used and beef and these powder are kept buried for 7 days underground I am like you know and uh, that might be for the fermentation or some other thing why it is so that question has to be asked. Then that we sprinkle on the plants and this for the uh, as a which can act as a pesticide. Plants are to be irrigated with washing of fish of course, this I know because uh, when I was a kid my mother used to put this uh, you know offal matters of the fish which cannot be taken as a food 
uh, nearby a what you call lemon tree which was not giving the fruit but the tree started giving I at least I, I can vouch for that because I have seen in my uh, childhood. So, that was a which was being used and it is there in the text also a warm eaten plant is to be irrigated with solution of oil cake in water earlier days oil cake being used because oil being produced in the village itself by the person you know each year during the harvest season we produce our own oil and keep it and use not buy from the market. So, <coughs> that is the things which we do not have today and this is the bidanga I thought I will show you and it is a bidanga uh, this thing and powerful anti parasitic herbs of Ayurveda which is being used profusely not only for the plants but also the human beings. And this is the uh, teal or the sesame which is being used also for that you know if we use this oil on your hair you can grow uh, good hair and then you will not having problem of itching and other things you know right. So, the uh, there is a Kandakar and other insects this I have shown you some of the insects what uh, you know affect our plants and are to be taken out from the roots okay, of the tree and which then sprinkle with the cold water for 7 days. I do not know why cold water or how it will affect this is a question that are coming to my mind and it might be coming to your mind for that you need to do research and find it out. And for destroying the insect, text recommended by administering the water containing milk and carcass water, kunapa, is basically called again the flesh and other things, it will be fermented and it will be put, it will be having lot of smell also, right, kunapa. And, uh, and bilatra and vaka, bhacha, we call basically uh, bacha kind of things, we call in and then cow dungs. So, this has to be. Uh, basically uh, used for the destroying the insects. And by plastering of Siddhartha is a another plant Abda and Vacha and uh, Kusta, Ativasa, these are the all plants which you people may not be knowing even is a local uh, in the Sanskrit names and uh, this can be used also for the uh, as act as a pesticide. And you can fumigate, fumigate is burned it and then the gas will be going out with the fume of Siddhartha, Ramatha, Bidanga, I have shown you, Ushana and washing of beefs uh, and horn of buffaloes and flesh of pigeons along with the powder of bilota. See there is a lot of uh, things are there, but one has to see which one use where that also part is a part of the text, but I am not uh, mentioning here because of positive time. And uh, another recommendation plaster with bidanga with mix of ghee irrigate with the alkanine water for 7 days. This, that is also they were aware that this can be done and uh, pollutase of the beef siddhartha and sisam like this is again uh, kind of a, uh, these things which has to be used. And warm eaten plant is to be irrigated with a solution of oil cake in the water right. This is uh, being used earlier days and insects and leaves are destroyed by dusting them with ashes and brick dust. And this uh, I have used recently in my plants in the kitchen garden which is quite useful right, uh, particularly with the ashes from the wood and uh, some people use from the cow dung ashes right. And injury caused by insects right uh, to the plant can be healed by plastering jant jatugra and then sesam or cow's urine, ghee and uh, of course, siddhartha and watering with the milk right. And these are things are there which is available locally and it can be used. If you look at uh, we use uh, basically cows and then milk and then urine and then uh, other things. So, therefore, this is the thing which is being used as a manure also you know like cow dung and other thing. So, manuring is very important because evidence about use of manure goes back to the Vedic period and uh, because they use the term Karisha and Sakari, Sakam, Saka basically it is nothing but cow dung you know. And cow dung is important that is why cow is uh, considered as a very important for our cultivation culture right what we are in it inherited from our ancestors. The word Karisa continued is Satapata Brahmana denotes dry cow dung and cow dung was collected in a cow stall according to Atharbeda provide reference in mention of cow dung as a useful manure of sali variety of rice. It is very you know sought after 
rice and uh, even during Vedic period. And uh, the Arthas has to observe that the qualities of land is very important like uh, and which is has to be uh, krutam, krutam means basically has to be done, it is not that you will get, okay? you will have to contrive it, you will have to make it, uh, prepare it for that. And uh, Khetra Sodha which is uh, you know is important uh, being mentioned in the Ramayana that means improving the field and use of uh, basically fertilizers or the manures. Of course, nowadays people are using chemical fertilizers, but there is the organic fertilizer what we uh, our ancestors were using. And Krisi Parasar you might be aware I have I had mentioned earlier that recognizes the importance of manure for crops and um, about uh, the you know which is important for getting a good yield right. And uh, if you look at I have shown you like a, here a pit and which is containing cow dung and this is known as basically pit composting like is having pit you put that it will ferment and then you will get the compost. Arthasastra uh, refers to treatment of seeds and application of manure to the soil and if you look at all, most of all the scriptures are talking about the manuring or the using of use of manure for the enhancing the fertility of the soil. And Kasya Piya Krusi Sukti, if you look at this is the uh, text which is basically edited with an introduction by study by Guela Ostila, a Sanskrit work. This is the largest work on the agriculture, it is a very thick. Uh, book and uh, unfortunately it is not available now what I was told, but it is uh, being done by the uh, edited by the uh, you know Gaila Vazitila you can see. And we say that uh, this is a very exhaustive you know uh, book describing the about various aspects of agriculture in India, ancient India. And cultivator uh, basically you know you will have to use cow dung, goat dung and composites with the uh, you know you know to increase the fertility of soil that means you will have to use that. And it advises that paddy seedling had to be transplanted in rice field softened by ploughing that means first you do the ploughing and then you put this uh, what you call seedling. Of course, it should be uh, manured with the goat dung, cow dung with uh, of course, lata, lata you know basically is a creeper and uh, bratati right which will be going up these things has to be done that means it is basically if you can look at a, it acts as a mulching also right. And um, according to this verse 513 it says that it is desirable that second cultivation is to be done after having raised the fertility of soil by manuring with goat dung or cow dung or composites of the mix of that because early days goats were being reared that is why Gandhiji was very fond of goat milk right if you remember that uh, this is uh, because if you want to have a second uh, you know uh, cultivation then you will have to enhance this fertility. And you once would do that with the growing population particularly. According to the text by the Sirabrati, Lambu, Kakaru and Trapsu other belong to category of Saka, Saka means basically pot herbs you can develop the herbs in a pot are to be fumigated with the bone odor and the hog on Sunday. I do not know why on Sunday, why not other days and to be burned by the straw fire in the month of Falguna. See they are very particular about the month and then uh, of course, maybe with the seasonal thing sprinkle uh, that with oil cake mixed with the spiritous liquor. You know liquor can be used for maybe for fermentation of this and then that will be something organ something will be coming up which will be important to enhance the fertility of the soil. And there are various kinds of fertility of course, now it has been improved little bit that is a trench composting and if you look at you can put this uh, material organic matter particularly cow dung, goat dung, even like your vegetables, creeper, some other thing material which is uh, can be made compost organic matter. And then it will take time so that you can have here, you can fill here and then you can this may be working place you can join here and then once it is filled and then prepared for it you can put this plant. And this is known as trench composting 
and there are uh, some other varieties that is a uh, anaerobic in nature this is, but whereas aerobic nature where air will pass through this is a compost basket kind of thing you put those organic matter for the decompose. Right? But in this case some of the gas will be coming out which will be may be polluting the atmosphere, but here the gas will not be because air is going through. So, therefore, this is being also uh, you know is used not only nowadays in earlier times also even some villages people do that. They may not be aware that is aerobic and aerobic, but they know that this is the thing you know to be done. So, and uh, as I told that cow is a part of our you know agriculture uh, particularly in village areas people do rear and even in cities. Why will uh, rear cow uh, you know uh, is the question and why our ancestor did it in ancient time. There are several regions and of course, most of them you will be knowing one is the of course, we use milk products profusely and other thing is agriculture, tilling, irrigation, carting uh, and transport. For the transport earlier days mostly it is done by the ox or oxen. oxen. And, uh, and there is another important aspect which is for a better physical and mental health physical because you will get the food and you will be taking care of the cow, you will do some physical work and also the take a nutritious food uh, like a, their milk products and mental health means you know like you will have a relationship with them. And that is the reason why now people are talking about animal therapy in western countries and earlier it was a part of our life. And I have seen that you know people wherever they are in a trouble they will go and have a chat with the cow as if you know uh, there is a uh, can listen or can understand the thing. And that gives as well as because if you go and tell your problem to some another person that fellow may spread and it may you may encounter problem, but if you go and tell talk with a cow or some other animal which you are having this thing then you will not. So, that will give the things you know that is therefore, this is the important part what our ancestors were doing and we need to do that if possible at this moment also. So, uh, India uh, today has around 37 pure cattle breeds, a lot of breeds are being uh, what you call extinct because we are not taking care of them and then and 5 of them, 5 of these are more maybe Saliwal, Gir, Red, Sindh and uh, Tarparka, Rathi are well known for milking powers. It is more than the Jersey or the Holston, the western breeds right which is known for the milk production. And uh, there is another varieties like uh, Kankrez, Ongal, Haryana or belong to dual breeds that have milch power like milk they can produce milk more. Also the drought quality that means they are good for plowing animals also. There are uh, several these are the some of the you know figures I am showing I will not going through that this is a Panwara, Nagori they are having each are having their own name you know that means we are so attached to them started giving the name you know and it belongs to various parts of the country because India is not a country it is a subcontinent I call it you know. <laughs> so, there are various regions that are having. So, cow was very important and we should preserve it for our life and so also cultivation and, and the local cow or the native plow is very important. I will be talking about little bit why, what are the differences between indigenous and the foreign cattle breeds. If you look at this our indigenous breed they can tolerate the heat as the sweat gl glands are bigger in size and more in number. These are technical thing you can see yourself and sticky secretion smooth the skin and short hairs avoid insect pests. And that is you will see that because they are being grown here for the ages together. Whereas, the exotic foreign cattle breeds like your Holstein or the Jersey or some other breeds developed in the cold temperate conditions and sweat glands are small and less in number. So, cannot tolerate high temperature in our tropical climate. And you can see even today that in the summer the cow will be you know uh, making a vibration <laughs> moving here and there like that. And they are they are feeling pain because this is not the place for them because the body is not designed for that ok. It is as but like a foreigner will come and stay in the 45 degree Celsius maybe sometimes it goes to 48, 49 he will feel fish out of water right. Similarly, the cows are in pain also the western cows what we are taking because of getting more milk. 
and inion is very very active and disease resistance adjustable T is quite excellent and most of them are specially developed for hard work from centuries together you know it is not that they are they are being used for uh, ploughing other things and they are prone you know uh, acclimatized with this thing and more pr this uh, exotic cattle breeds are prone to disease cross breed bulls are lazy in nature and not suitable for hard work right and if you look at the indigenous one is small close is with hard hoops hoops means you know in the their uh, leg or the palm uh, we call is good for the ploughing but whereas uh, hoop decay is less here because when they will they will be friction and then it will be decaying it cannot it can run on the hard rock rocky surface particularly himalayan calf you say they can go also steep uh, they can uh, climb the mountain you know himalayan cow if you look at i have seen myself and which is very uncalled for we cannot as a human being climb but the cow can climb you know <laughs> like and hoop in so, uh, is soft for in case of exotic or the uh, cattle breeds and gap between the hoops is wide as a result it is uh, you know can't walk uh, properly it will be very slow and they get also hoop diseases it cannot run on the rocky surface cannot even walk forget about running okay and certain breeds produce good amount of milk of course uh, most of them breeds produce less amount of milk but we should also look at the quality of the milk what we get and uh, which i am not discussing but you can look at technicalities in case of exotic or cattle uh, or the foreign cattle breeds in case of foreign cattle breeds the y chromosome of uh, the boss tarus is damaged during the process of evolution leads to the decrease of milk yield potential and high fertility with the time right and the teats and pores uh, remains tightly closed decreasing the chances of mastitis but in contrast if you look at the teats and pores are big hence milking is easy in case of uh, foreign cattle breeds but this is the reason for more chances of mastitis that means mastitis uh, will be getting they will be getting lot of pain it because those pores will be blocked right in case of uh, exotic breeds but in case of indigenous cattle breeds it won't because they are designed that way and uterus opening in case of indigenous cattle remains close which minimizes the infection in contrast the uh, foreign breeds that is uh, the entry to the ure, uterus inside the body remains open so therefore it is subjected to the you know uh, maybe infection very easily right and vitamin a and iodine content in case of indigenous cattle breed is more in milk and bad cholesterol is less right the good cholesterol may be more i am mean like that one has to see but it is but in case of the foreign cattle breed milk has more amount of bad cholesterol therefore you will get more heart problems and other things and vitamin is a is less so therefore we need to look at that you know indigenous cow is uh, should be used for our application of course the uh, the ex the foreign cattle can be good for them but for us it may not be because it is not uh, acquainted with or not evolved in this part of the country so basic uh, principles of traditional natural agriculture let let me just talk about little bit about that traditional agriculture consider the animals crops and soil as a single system it's not different okay the integrated holistic approach what we think and it emphasizes on a local breeds and varieties that's why i've already talked about why we'll go for local or the native cow breeds and it advocates use of astrological sowing and planting calendar of course i am having little reservation about this astrological sowing although it may be used as a predictive tool according to one of my student who happens to be engineer but he, he uh, takes a lot of interest in this astrological but i don't have faith but that doesn't mean that you should not check it you can check it and find it out whether it's true or not that has to be done okay and it uses various herbal mineral additives for compost preparation which is you know natural and uh, it advocates for the local production and distribution system that is very important because we will have to produce locally and distribute so that transportation cost 
and also the pollution due to the transportation can be minimized. And people who, uh, in one locality should not you know remain hungry because food is not there. But nowadays what is even good varieties of let us say apple will go away from Kashmir and you know other people. Good varieties of the rice sal suppose it is in Bihar. Now, Bihari people would not get that you know. So, therefore, that uh, things goes because of this market system and then we advocate on that, that natural farming. It relies on the open pollination seeds uh, the, in the natural manner. The, you know pollination is very important. Therefore, birds and other things they do and insects you know like uh, your uh, butterflies and uh, the other insects they help in pollination. So, that is a very important thing which we need to take care because uh, nowadays people are thinking to use artificial pollination because pollination is being uh, reduced nowadays because of the you know air pollution and water pollution lot of insects are dying and which is very important. Therefore, it is very important to look at that and advantages of natural farming the farming cost can be reduced considerably right. We are talking about a zero budget farming that means you need not to pay any money you can do you can integrate it in such a way that one can uh, have zero budget farming. So, that in the farmer would not die because of in debt because they have taken lot of loans and then they could not repay because of you know calamities. So, that has to be looked at in ancient days it was all integrated right and the eliminate uh, you know we will have to uh, by this uh, natural farming we can eliminate use of synthetic or the chemical fertilizer and pesticide which is not only uh, you know bad for our health, but for the mankind. And it minimizes soil erosion as I had explained earlier increasing the crops yield up to two fold within five years because the soil is already being you know spoiled by the use of chemical fertilizer it will take time to come up. So, and then free from harmful chemicals artificial flavor and preservatives right. And uh, we do all these things for our you know uh, what you call food industries that is another big problem challenge for the people to have a good health. And eating natural foods may in fact reduce the risk of heart attack strokes and cancers as I had mentioned earlier. And if we use the native things and then you know it will be really you can overcome lot of problems. Uh, to a larger extent. So, if you look at the natural farming is basically for the mother nature it is related and you can think of uh, there will be environment restoration right. Because if we use it there will be environmental restoration means environment can become better if you would not pollute the water air and other things so also soil. And polyculture and biodiversity is important for the nature to work, right. And uh, we, as I told, the intercropping nothing but your polyculture, right. Together you are doing symbiotic relationship develop. Efficient use of natural resources we are talking about because if you will use locally, you need not to really uh, spoil it. And restore some trust in society because today, because of food and because of business, the trust among the people are. Uh, you know being reducing at alarm rates. trust is important. So, therefore, we can restore the trust in the society trust is important for any relationship and billion of innocent people are dying because of food and that culture has to be that nobody should die without food and that humanity has to come up when you go for the natural farming. And uh, recession of proof of local job creation in sustainable manner so, you are going for job, but agriculture will give a lot of job security right food is important anyway you are uh, working hard to get the food and the food what you are getting is junk or is not of good quality. So, you can do means you will get the good food right and decentralized food system what I had already discussed urban natural way. you see earlier days people say that uh, the uh, villagers will make the you know cultivate the and feed the uh, urban people I said no you should convert the urban areas to the you know village urban areas in ancient India nothing but a larger village right and they should cultivate their own food. And community supported organic uh, agriculture the natural agriculture is important community together will be doing not individual food security and safety and health prevention through proper diet as I told and um, 
as I told earlier that health you know we need not to spend that much of money. And if you look at there is a climate stabilization by carbon captures it can be done and food and clean water for uh, all because what happened the water you are not contaminating because of adding chemicals and then using the urban waste and putting into rivers a lot of problem can be solved. And if you do all those things natural farming can give you the world peace according to me because the peace is being hampered because of you know you are greedy and you are trying to encroaching into others areas. So, concluding remark let me tell you nutritious and natural food is essential for not only human beings for other animals also right that is important to keep in mind. Man has not created forests, rivers, mountains, brooks extra, but destroyed them in the name of development with the help of modern science and technology. And uh, natural farming practiced by our ancestry is the panacea to the modern human being owes as I told uh, in the last uh, you know uh, as I told earlier. And more research should be carried out to adopt the traditional agriculture technology to re-establish the umbilical relationship with mother nature. You know when you are in a home there is a pipeline which comes to you for feeding from the mother. Okay. So, that umbilical uh, relationship is required leading to the restoration of natural balance in our ecosystem which is at stake which is in trouble today. And native agriculture technology should be preserved and improved further not that you uh, you know you uh, throw it out as being done today. And uh, native seed banks should be created for preservation of native breeds not that you will have to depend on the multinational companies or companies to have your own seed. We should have seed varieties and then we should have a you know of our own. So, this is very important point you should keep in mind that will affect because that is affecting entire life food is important. So, therefore, I will with this I will stop over and I hope that we, and wish that you should learn something from it and apply in your life. Thank you very much.